Hi guys, this is Jason here from Nathaniel School of Music. I am the piano faculty here. And in this video, the, the goal is to help you choose your instrument which fits you best in a variety of ways. So for this video, I am going to try and show you different kinds of keyboards which have different kinds of features uh, which also have different kinds of budgets which uh, you know is obviously an important thing while choosing it and uh, the and also different sounds which may fit into a specific genre which you might be playing um, <clears throat> so let's get started so I have quite a few keyboards around me as you can see um, I have something here this is the Yamaha PSR E323 and then I have a keyboard here it's called the Kurzweil K2600 I have also a really small one here the M Audio Key Station Mini 32 and here I have the Roland A88 keyboard so each of these keyboards has a different uh, functionality each of these keyboards are priced differently and they all are hooked up and are designed to do different sorts of things. So before we get into the keyboards, I'm first going to talk about the varieties of keyboards there are and also the, the, the different features each of these keyboards should have. So the first thing obviously is the number of keys. Keyboards come in various sh shapes and sizes. Generally, we, as a piano player, you would you would look out for an 88 key keyboard. The 88 key keyboard uh, will will be there in almost with almost every uh, renowned keyboard manufacturer. But however, if you are not a, a piano player uh, and if you are looking for something more portable. You could look out for something like this one, which has 61 keys, or something smaller, which has 49, uh, and also something like this. So, if you're not looking at piano feel, but yet you still want to play the keyboard and, you know, trigger your chords and synths and all that, uh, something like this works really well. It's really portable, it fits into a normal backpack and uh, very easy to move around with as I said. The other thing you need to look for when you're buying a keyboard is the action. Is the action something which feels like a piano uh, which is mostly going to be a weighted or a, ha or a hammer action. The, the other, if you're not comfortable with that you could go in for a semi-weighted feel which uh, feels almost like a piano but it's not really heavy and then you have the synth feel which is found here which is very easy to play as you can see so this is a semi weighted keyboard and uh, the one you see here this is a hammer action keyboard so these are the other choices you have when choosing a keyboard and usually something as it gets uh, to the graded and the weighted uh, the graded hammer action and the weighted feel uh, it will cost you a little bit more as well the other the other thing you need to look out for while choosing a keyboard is the touch response now all keyboards I recommend should have touch so Touch is basically the ability for you to play soft and play loud uh, as, as the energy you put in increases the volume gets louder and so on. Uh, there are some keyboards however uh, especially the beginner level keyboards <coughs> uh, which do not have touch and if you are a serious keyboard player I really recommend not getting a keyboard which uh, which doesn't have touch. For example, on the Yamaha keyboard here, there's an option to disable touch and 
however loud or soft I play, it's not giving me any kind of dynamics. So whenever buying a keyboard, I think that's a very important thing, having touch. The, the other thing is polyphony. So if you're a keyboard player who, who needs to work with multiple sounds, let's say orchestral patches and you know really uh, high 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 uh, high quality piano sounds you really need uh, polyphony that's the number of notes uh, the instrument is able to handle at a time so the higher the polyphony uh, the better it is and the better it will sound uh, the better kinds of samples it can work with and so on uh, the other thing you need to consider is multi timbrality so do you want the do you want to be able to play multiple patches at the same time for example do you want to play piano and also be able to play the strings with the same go for example uh, a patch like this the ability to control the volume levels of each of those patches and so on um, along with multi timbrality you may also need uh, to be able to split the keyboard so for maybe your left hand wants to play a bass line and the right hand plays a melody line so that feature I think is very useful if you need it so you may have patches where, you know, the way I've set up this patch is a clavinova is on the left side of my keyboard and then a horn section is on the right of my keyboard. So I could keep shifting between the patches. So on. So that's something you may want to consider as well. The next point is MIDI compatibility. So MIDI is something very important these days because a lot of the music production work, uh, probably all the music production work happens on a computer. And uh, it's not very easy to get a lot of keyboards set up uh, working the way you want it to. So you need to find a way to also send MIDI data to the computers and then the computers have some amazing sounds inbuilt there. So whichever keyboard you get, uh, what I would suggest is look at the back of the keyboard. So even a keyboard as simple as the Yamaha E323, if you look at the back here, it has two points, a MIDI out and a MIDI in. So if you see something like this, or if you see maybe a USB uh, out, uh, it's probably going to support MIDI. And at the most, you just need a driver, uh, which usually works out just fine. For example, Yamaha have a very standard driver, which you load up into your PC or Mac. And whenever you connect a MIDI cable to it, it recognizes, it doesn't recognize the sound which you're, trig which you're playing. It recognizes the performance, so it will recognize the notes you've played, when you shift it to the next note and various other things. So I think MIDI compatibility is very important. I think most keyboards come with it, but you may want to just cross check before picking it up. And then uh, computer connectivity, which is quite useful. There are lots of cases, uh, lots of keyboards which allow you to record your own sounds on the keyboard itself. Uh, a lot of Yamahas allow you to do that. So you need to have a way to interface that with the computer, either using maybe a Firewire cable or a USB cable or something like that. So uh, think about that as well. If you're looking to create a lot of your work on the keyboard itself, uh, you you may need to find a way to send that data to the computer uh, not preferably not using an audio cable uh, you may lose quality so 
uh, it's recommended to use a USB or a Firewire cable. Uh, and also the tempo of your performance can then be synced to the computer. It can be matched later. Along with purchasing the keyboard, you may want the keyboard to do other things for you. Like perhaps record a microphone or record a guitar. Uh, that's a handy tool. Uh, since otherwise you may have to invest in a separate sound card or a separate audio interface. So uh, there are lots of keyboards out there which come with an XLR input or which come with a guitar input and which behave as audio interfaces which can send really high quality audio to and fro and you could hear <clears throat> sound coming from your computer through the keyboard's inbuilt sound module. So apart from giving you keyboard based sounds it's also an entire audio interface which is quite cool for those of you who want to also work closely with a computer and try to arrange and produce your music. Coming to controllers, now if you're a, a serious piano player and if that's all you do, you don't really need a single controller out there except probably a pitch, uh, sorry, except a sustain pedal and maybe another pedal, a foot switch perhaps to change patches. So when you're picking up something like, uh, when you're picking up a keyboard, you need to think about stuff which is going to add to your playing. Like a piano player would need a sustain pedal. It's part of piano playing. Uh, a keyboard player, however, may need other things. Along with playing the sound, you need to be, find a way to modulate the sound. So, uh, common, common uh, uh, controllers are your pitch wheel and your mod wheel. So most of the top keyboards out there come with that and they are controlled in different ways. So on the Kurzweil, uh, the, this is the pitch wheel so it allows me to control pitch. So if I go to this note specific parameter which can again be controlled on the keyboard and you also may may need to look into the the user interface as well how how easy is it to work on the on the keyboard you either have a really small screen to work work with or you may have an app on your computer which controls whatever's on your keyboard uh, that also may be, a, may be something useful for you. Moving forward, you, you also have to consider the storage and expansion capabilities of the keyboards you're buying. Uh, if, if you're choosing to record some stuff on the keyboard, it needs to have a storage facility or it needs to have the ability to support a, an external hard disk. And the keyboard you buy today, which may be in 2014, uh, how current will it be with the keyboard industry in 2016 or 2017? In other words, is the, is the company you're dealing with giving you a way to expand it? Perhaps install specific cards to give you more sounds or using software uh, give you more sounds or maybe firmware updates all of these things are quite crucial I think because as the years go by everything is going to get better everything is going to get quicker faster the processors are going to grow so whatever you have should also probably grow with it you can do things on the keyboard which don't actually involve keyboard playing where you go, go out there, play a chord and do everything live. You could also get a lot of things to be triggered for you. Uh, you can have keyboards which have pads wherein you press a pad and it just gives you a sound. It gives you a sound effect or it may give you a chord. Uh, it may give you a drum loop. It may give you anything 
whatever you 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 want it to give you you may also need something like an arpeggiator where you play something and then the entire let's say you play a chord and it while playing the chord it loops in a pattern so if that's the kind of player you are well <clears throat> these are features to look out for while picking it up and <clears throat> that's about it actually these are the the decisions you need to take so to summarize the whole thing you have to figure out the number of keys you need the action the where you need to ensure that there's things like touch the uh, polyphony uh, another thing i forgot to mention is after touch so when you play a particular key you play it further down and then the sound changes even further maybe you want that to add uh, something to your organ playing or your synth playing something like that uh, and then i mentioned things like uh, multi timbrality the midi output features and uh, also the the uh, allowing the keyboard itself to be a audio interface and so on so what i'm going to do now is to just give you a, a demonstration of the different keyboard varieties you may come across when you go to a shop and perhaps i could even give you the budget the rough budget you're looking you're going to look out for first off is something like this you have uh, it has 61 keys and it's really light as you can see and it has quite a bit of options this this is what we probably know as a portable keyboard and most students who end up starting their journey into the uh, instrument will end up picking up something like this because it's very very affordable uh, It, it it's something you can just go over to a store choose a brand you like i think i rate yamaha as the best when it comes to entry level keyboards like this and it can do a lot for starters the piano tone sounds really really nice the sonic options you have electric pianos like and also the ability to have a dual sound it's a piano with a string and also a so you could split and have a bass sound here you can even adjust the split point so it, it has quite a bit of features and in in short it it sounds quite good so i think they've upgraded it now but it sort of looks the same and it also gives you beats and loops to play around with the um, and yeah it, it's something which works and what's also cool is you can plug in a sustain pedal you can also send it out to your uh, speakers if you want a louder sound or if you're playing gigs it also runs on batteries it has a midi compatibility so it pretty much has whatever you need and what's nice about this which a lot of the more expensive keyboards have is it has inbuilt speakers which is a nice feature so you just plug it on put up put up the volume and you get a sound right away so this is a portable keyboard uh, by no means a basic one because i think it sounds good and if you're someone who who just likes good sounding keyboards i think this is something which you could consider it doesn't have fancy features but whatever it has works and here's the next one this is the curzwell K two six hundred which I have, and this is what we call as a workstation keyboard. So it allows you to also uh, make an entire song on board this instrument. Uh, in order to do that, it has a huge number of sounds. 
uh, and the samples are have a much more variety uh, and here for instance in the yamaha i was able to just have two uh, dual voices here i think i can go up to 16 or more so there are a lot of options you get and this is 76 keys as you can see so this is a keyboard workstation uh, you also have arranger keyboards which i don't re i don't have one here to show you but you do have arranger keyboards which also are very similar to this the only uh, difference there is you can create everything in the song and even sequence music together and then send that to a computer and do a lot more things with the workstation most of it is pretty much live i guess and then we have digital pianos so digital pianos are designed for a serious piano player so if you are looking to just play piano not do any of the other stuff like sequencing arranging uh, if you pick up a digital piano it will be really affordable it will give you all the 88 keys which feel exactly like a piano and it sounds really really good so good good brands which make digital pianos of course are yamaha uh, they again have really good budget pianos like the p35 and you also have some really good sounding pianos from Nord, from Gerswell, uh, from <coughs> Cog. The, the options are endless, really. It, it goes on. You just have to get something which suits your budget. I think that's the bottom line. You, you choose what you want. If digital piano is what you want, <clears throat> I am definitely sure that there will be something within your budget which you can purchase. And finally, so we've talked about the portable keyboards, we've talked about the workstation keyboards, the digital pianos, and then we have the MIDI controllers. So a MIDI controller, like this one here, does not have any inbuilt sounds. What it will do is it allows you to send the data of the performance via something like a USB out to the computer and then on the computer you have sound modules which will receive that data and then give you the sound as the output through the computer speaker so this does not send sound this does not have sound to begin with and uh, it need does it does not even receive sound so this just sends data to a computer so this comes in many shapes and sizes this is the key station mini 32 which i would recommend for non piano players only because this doesn't it, it doesn't feel too bad but it definitely doesn't feel like a piano and it doesn't give you as many keys as a piano has which is 88 the other midi controller which i have here on display is the Roland A88. So this is designed to feel just like a piano. But again, like I mentioned, it has absolutely no sounds on board. So what you would do is connect the output, which has a USB there, to the computer. I right now am using an iMac. And that's about it. So when I play a note on this keyboard, The sound is being controlled by the my normal computer setup right here but the data is coming in from the keyboard controller so this gives me a lot of advantages because uh, based on the number of sounds I have based on how fast my computer is based on how well I take care of it and uh, you know manage my software I have certain sounds which work so for instance piano t uh, for the for, for my piano playing i use something called piano tech which works really well for me so here's the interface and this is basically the software which is giving me 
the sound of the piano. And I could go over here and maybe change the sound as well. Maybe a vibraphone. So as you can see, the control of my sound is coming from the computer and what I have running now is a software called Mainstage which basically puts all the software plugins I have all together in one neat interface. So it allows me to, to toggle between the patches, it allows me to make patches and it gives me all of these features which are normally going to be there on these keyboards. Um, the other advantage of using MIDI or using a MIDI controller is the softwares you use will have a really really amazing interface. Uh, it's just like working on a computer. So for me my preferred choice is a MIDI controller uh, but your choice could be something else of course. So uh, I hope this video was useful to give you all the possibilities. And again, if you're still a serious piano player and you, you want a piano, well, you could always just buy a piano. Uh, if you buy a piano, you have upright pianos and you have grand pianos. So if that, however, will be a lot more expensive and it will be a lot more difficult to maintain and manage. You'll have to tune it. Uh, temperature will change the tuning. You may have to replace strings. It's basically like managing an, a normal acoustical instrument. So <clears throat> these are your options. There are lots of nice brands out there for the portable keyboards. As I mentioned, I would definitely go with Yamaha all the way and nothing else. For digital pianos, you have a lot of options. Uh, Yamaha, of course, is the best sounding for the price. But then again, you have a lot of other nice models, like I mentioned, Nord, Kurzweil, and uh, Cog as well. So, in the MIDI controller range, well, you have a lot of options. You can get something as tiny as this, or a fully blown keyboard like this, which is a Roland A88. Uh, something else could also be uh, perhaps an Akai MPK88, which apart from giving you all these keys, also gives you pads which allow you to play drum loops, uh, trigger samples and all of this other additional stuff. So <clears throat> find the keyboard which suits you and then go ahead and buy it. And uh, I think the knowledge, uh, you need to have enough and more knowledge uh, before buying the, buying the instrument because after you buy it you don't want to realize that there's a feature you, you really wanted which is not there. So hope you found this video useful and if you have any questions please let us know in the comments section.